Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody inside and outside the ballpark. My name is Novid Player, and welcome to episode 26 of the Novid Notes podcast, where we talk about many different types of creators across the VR chat platform. With me today, I actually have one of the, in my opinion, one of the most funny content creators um, on this damn platform, uh, the legendary blue cyan halo Spartan that loves the shit on Ohio just as much as I do, uh, uh, Wushi. <laughs> Wushi, welcome onto the podcast. Hello, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, for I guess the general listening audience listening at home, uh, you know who who exactly is Wushi? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I am a individual who uh, started posting on TikTok uh, and really enjoyed it, and now I just make short form content. Uh, Usually just with my voice. I rarely use any trending sounds, and I just love having fun creating content. Fair enough. So I was going to say one of, the, one of the first things. So, you know, you've been doing it for quite a while. So out of curiosity, what got you started into, like, VR chat as a whole? Uh, what got me started was, I think it was, like, 2014, I believe. Uh, I saw a friend on Discord. They would always be in a game called VR chat like 24 7 and after like maybe the fifth week i'm like, like i need to see what this is about so i i clicked on his profile got, went to steam downloaded vr chat and uh it was uh it was enjoyable i started from being a desktop uh i went to windows mixed reality and then i had so much fun i'm like I'm going for the index and I bought the index uh, and then the world shut down for uh, you know the pandemic and that just bolstered me in VR it I at home doing nothing get to play in VR it's been a long trip fair no yeah that I, I will say I, I definitely think that the pandemic boosted like VR chat as a whole with like being you know stuck indoors and whatnot it's it's crazy how much that platform has grown since then. Um, but yeah, I would say uh, definitely, yeah, because you're, I remember you being one of the like OGs from way back in the day. Um, oh, I was, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, so since you've been around so long, you know, what was like your favorite moment from like back then that ma many players may not have experienced? Uh, I think, it, I mean, VR chat was smaller back then, but uh, open mic night. That was my favorite. Either you get like, you know, a good group of people who are actually treating the open mic night as, you know, an open mic night and each taking turns. Some was good, some was bad, or the, the chaotic version where it was just the hangout hub and everyone was screaming and, you know, making a show. It was always a fun time there. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I've, I've heard many different things about the open mic nights from back in the day. I've, I heard they were like historical to say the least when it comes to like oh, yes. VR chat and its history. That's awesome. That's awesome. I was going to say with that, it's um, out of curiosity, since you've been here so long, like if you had, um, you know, if you had one thing that's currently on VR chat, and you had a chance to bring it back to that past, what would it be? Like, give me an example, because I'm... So let's say, like, um, like optimization, like, from this decade, or this era till, you know, back then. Or maybe, like, a certain world, or a certain game, or... Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird question. I was just kind of, I just kind of thought of that one on the fly. I'll, <laughs> I'll be real with you. So taking something from VRChat now... And putting it back into the past. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to say probably the mobile ports of VR chat, because that would then force them to optimize the game, and then that would be like two, two three years of optimization to have that run on a, a, a mobile platform. If I could bring that into the past, that's probably what I would do. So we could have like, uh, what was it? I think it was v, uh, New Year's Eve. This year, last year, whatever, they had like, no, that, no, it was Ferality. They had th 300 people in one uh, instance, which was uh, quite a task. And if things keep getting more optimized, that could be, you know, the normal around here, which yeah. I can only hope for. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. I was gonna say with that, right? Like, because I think the New Year's Eve, I think is like a hundred eighty. I think, I think is what it was. Because I I remember hearing about that one yeah, too. They had, I think the New Year's Eve was possibly a hundred, and then the uh, the forty cap got raised to eighty sometime this year, and then Ferality got. Uh, a chance to do, I think, either 200 or 300. I tried joining the 300 one. Uh, it Actually, I tried joining on my Steam Deck. I have all the uh, perf uh, performance on low, so I could, you know, get in. Uh, it crashed. Uh, then I tried on VR, uh, and it just never loaded. <laughs> but... I, but you can see videos of people getting into that 300 lobby, and it was, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, no, I was, when I had heard about it, um, I was dumbfounded that you could fit that many people in the lobby and somehow make it work. Granted, those people's yeah, PCs it's... were cooking, <laughs> but. Oh, most definitely. Someone did a, like a flyby video, and like it was chugging, and they, and it was like a, what was it? Uh, a volunteer for uh, Ferality that did that. So, I mean, they most likely had a pretty beefy computer to begin with to be volunteering to, like, take videos with all avatars shown. So, you know, with th 300 people is... I just want that optimization that happened, and maybe you can get, like, you know, at least 60 frames in a 300 with all avatars on. That would be ideal. Right. I was going to definitely say, with it seems like every New Year's Eve uh, world that's released, it always seems like they're trying to push boundaries in that sense. It's, usually it's when the VR chat servers are at their worst, too, because of how many people oh, are in flux. Yes. Uh, and Christmas. Christmas Everyone gets too, a, yeah. a Quest headset, and it just skyrockets. Yeah. Um, well, anyways, kind of kind of to 180 the topic a little bit um so you've been doing content creation for quite a while as well so what kind of drove you like when you started playing vr chat what kind of drove you into doing content creation uh well i always loved content creation before getting into vr chat uh and i forget what really pushed me in the direction i think it was i guess it started off as like streaming uh, on Twitch, I'm like, oh, you know, this is fun. And then uh, when I downloaded TikTok, I noticed there wasn't really at all any VR chat content. And I'm like, well, I, I guess I could fill that void. And uh, I just started creating and creating. And the, uh, the freedom of the camera movements uh, really helped a lot because you can literally place the camera anywhere you want and be as creative as you want. You're not limited with like a tripod. And uh, my early years, I did lots of different uh, variations of content, and now I'm uh, so far settled into the uh, the news show. I'm probably going to branch off at some point and see if I can still uh, retain an audience. Of course. Yeah, I'll say I, I can speak for quite a few people that, because I had talked to some people uh, that are on my staff team with a convention I've worked for, and we there was times that like we'd be shitting on ohio and there'd be certain quotes that we would like quote from your content and we're like man that <laughs> it's it's just it's just nuts um <laughs> bro if 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 there's anything that a lot of us can agree on ohio sucks ohio, ohio. and that's uh it's true <laughs> uh, it's sadly true <laughs> i'll say funny enough uh, i actually had to go to ohio uh, the first week of July for um, a barbershop. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. Well, it's for the Barbershop International Convention and Contest. Um, we had won, my course had won the previous year. And so this year we had to go perform our swan set, essentially like the victory lap. And um, mm -hmm. we, dude, everything is so overpriced. The fact that the cheapest thing around the area was Papa John's because they had a special for a $10 large pizza. Bro, everything else, like, a simple meal was, like, 12 to 15 bucks. I'm like, brother, like, that's rough. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I... Did you see all the cornfields? I did. It was on the on the way up there. Oh, my gosh. It was nothing but cornfields on the way up there and on the way back. It was... Yeah, it was crazy. I, I don't know how people do it up there, but 
they they somehow manage it but yeah so i was gonna one of the questions i wanted to ask you so you know because vr chat is an infinite place when it comes to like the self look so out of curiosity what made you you know what started you off as this you know cyan blue halo spartan uh i hated visemes i hated creating mouths and blender and rigging it up in unity uh i had an older model that i would uh throw together and i'm like i'm getting tired of doing this i'm like what what doesn't have a mouth i'm like helmets don't have a mouth i'm like okay what do i like that you know has a helmet i'm like oh, i guess halo i guess uh spartan armor doesn't have any mouths to rig in fact it has no moving parts at all, so I don't need hair physics, I don't need cloth physics, it's just a suit, and I picked out, well, it's supposed to be blue, but it turns out, uh, it's cyan for some particular reason, maybe I'm colorblind, I do not know, uh, but... It's like a light blue, it's... Chose it? Yeah. Yeah, uh, and it, it just stuck, and I'm like, okay, I, well, I, I like this, and now I, like, rarely change out of it. Fair enough. Yeah, so, and I was going to say, you know, with, with how historical, you know, it is when it comes to like Halo and, you know, it's definitely, you know, was there, I guess, I guess like, I'm, I'm assuming you're a fan of the Halo series because of it as well. Like, it wouldn't make, I mean, it wouldn't make much sense yeah. if you weren't. Um, yeah, I, I do know some people that uh, have Spartan armor that have never played the game so it's i can see where it comes from but yeah i have played the games so out of, out of curiosity and i do love them out of, out of curiosity like what's your favorite halo uh i'd it's a tie up between two and three uh three because of the multiplayer uh xbox live all that fun stuff great memories and then two for the campaign because i would uh spend countless nights over at my cousin's playing the campaign over and over and you know that's another great memory so it's it's a good toss-up fair enough fair enough i'll say yeah two's two's definitely high on there for me um ironically enough it was actually the first halo i played was halo 2 um and I actually had it was on the original xbox um, and it had, it was a, it was a silver case. Uh, I think it's like a collector's edition or something. Uh, so it was that, that case, I still have that case. Um, I don't have my original Xbox anymore. Um, I have no idea what happened to it. This is years ago, but, um, probably got lost in one of my moves or something. Um, but yeah, no, Halo is definitely, definitely a fun thing. Um, so, you know, kind of, uh, on a different topic here. Um, so let's talk about the, the iconic pose. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so first and foremost, I know you probably get asked it a lot, but, um, what, what led up to that moment? Like what, what caused that to happen? Uh, so I was with a friend, uh, her name is Lady Kira and, uh, she's a VR chat photographer and I guess we were going world hopping and taking pictures and i'm like i'm gonna lay on top of this alligator and you know just be me and she snapped a couple pictures and i'm like you know that looks pretty funny so then i you know saved it uh and then there was one day where uh i think vr chat like started you know interacting with the uh the, let's say audience the community interacting with the community on twitter and i'm like huh okay well i like this picture so i'll post it and then I think like a couple days later, they said something again. I'm like, huh, I could post a new photo or I could post the same photo <laughs> with a different caption. That would be kind of funny. So I did that. And then they, you know, interacted with the community. And I'm like, I'm just going to keep replying with this image because it, it makes me laugh. I wasn't expecting it to, you know, gain a following or people to recognize it. But I'm just like, it's going to make me laugh going back throughout the years and just seeing me posting the same image over and over again for when they ask for, like, what, what, what world do you like? Or, like, you know, share a, a funny picture, and it's just always the same picture <laughs> over and over and over again. And, it, like, for a while, it was always the top comment in people's reply feeds. So as soon as you click on that post from VR Chat, there I would be with the same picture, top reply. <laughs> it was great. So I, out of curiosity, did you ever think that, that picture would blow up as much as it did? Uh, 
when it started getting over like maybe 20 likes every time I post it, I'm like, I, th I think people are starting to recognize this and it's starting to uh, gain a following. But that was like maybe eight months into it. Fair. I think I'm like, yeah, I, I tried my hardest to get it uh, put into the uh, VR chat New Year's Eve world. Uh, but because I believe, you know, it's not really my IP, uh, kind of a gray area, I can't really post that. But I mean, I did submit videos and those got accepted. So maybe uh, I'll try for like a minute straight, just have that picture just have on the, the picture. TV. <laughs> that would that'd be like, that'd be great. I would. Or just have like subtle flat, like uh, what what is subliminal messages of just the image just flashing on the screen. <laughs> Be great. I'll figure out something. <laughs> uh, I gotta get that picture in that world for sure. I I because I remember you tweeting about that, um, or maybe we had talked about the New Year's Eve world at that point. Um, but I I do remember you mentioning something like that. Uh, how like the IP in the whole thing, which I think is personally, I think it's silly because you know, there's so many IPs on this platform, like, and you can literally make anything. Um, I know it's part of it has to do with like some of the sponsor related things is from what I've been told. Yeah. Um, so they're just being safe. I, mean, I, I don't blame them at all, but you know, I'd rather have them play you safe than be like, yeah, whoosh is the reason VR chat got shut down. He put his funny image up there and you know, the IP holders didn't really like that. And how they don't exist. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Rather be safe than sorry. No, of, of course, of course. Um, so out, out of curiosity, you know, um, kind of to go back in time a little bit. So what essentially started the whole, the new show bit that you, that you're pretty well known for? Uh, so I was used to doing like trends and, trying to do my own trends at the same time. Uh, and then one day my friend kept on uh, sending me invites over and over like during the night. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to accept. And I accept, and I go to uh, his world. Lo and behold, it was that world. And I'm like, wow, the lighting here is pretty good. And I go step behind the desk and I look around. I'm like, this looks fantastic. And then I saved it. I'm like, I'm going to use this for, you know, in the future, and I think like a week went by. I'm like, maybe I'll try like a a news broadcast or something. Gave that a shot. Uh, I liked how it turned out, and then I just kept doing it, kept repeating, and over time the views did skyrocket, uh, and it just allowed me to be me. Say just verbal diarrhea essentially <laughs> and you know have it be funny you know shareable somewhat other people enjoyed it and like i enjoy creating it so if people like seeing it i'll still make it hell yeah hell yeah so i guess to kind of add on to that question um you know because you've made oh god hundreds you know hundreds and hundreds of videos um is there is there any particular short or video that like essentially holds a dear place in your heart like or was like one of your favorite ones to make or maybe it's the funniest in your opinion like what what uh what would be like a good example uh my favorite one is one that constantly flops if i repost it uh it was one that i had to do probably the most editing uh i had to film uh myself on a green screen but the green screen had to be in a certain world so i had to change the camera filter to green screen and then i had to keep the camera there and then uh remove myself so i had to walk away from the camera and then record in the like i cannot move the camera at all record and i had to uh it was kind of, i won't say it's like a, a thirst trap video but i wanted to you know try out some new editing techniques and whatnot and it it's, it's my favorite uh i'll send it to you if i can i should have it but yeah it's essentially uh i wanted to use black bars like coming in to like put focus onto me and then i didn't want it to like cover up me i wanted it to be in the background but i also want uh 
it to be in front of the background. So it, it's pretty much layering a video. And since uh, you can't really do layering in the VR Chats camera, I had to film myself and then film the uh, background, piece it together, wrap it up, and then uh, I added some close up of my face. I think it was like to like a FNAF like sound bite. That one's <laughs> probably my favorite. It's not the jump scare. It was uh, I think is I think their name's Lolbit or so. It's like uh, I think there's only enough people on the stage for one of us or something like that. It, mm. it sounded cool, so I wanted to use it, and I did. I liked it a lot. Uh, I think I only got like a, th a thousand views when I put it out, and then like a year later I put it out again, still a thousand views. I'm like, okay, yeah, it's underperforming. No one likes it, but I do. So that's my favorite. Well, fair enough. I was going to say, with that, you know, was there ever, kind of to go on the opposite side of the coin now, you know, was there ever a video that, you know, after getting it all done and sending it out, was there ever a video that just, like, you absolutely, like, wish it never existed? Uh, I don't think so. I think, like, every video I put out, I, you know, had thought behind, oh, no, no. I, I, every video I've put out, I've put thought into, and, you know, I don't regret putting it out. That's fair. That's fair. It's always good to have that mindset, though, you know, think, you know, properly rather than just throw random things on the internet and hope it sticks. So, you know, you, you said you've been, uh, just to kind of, there's going to be a lot of bouncing around topics. Um, <laughs> that's but, all good with me. Uh, so I was going to say with, uh, you know, you mentioned, you know, you streamed for a while. Um, so I guess one of my questions in that regard was how, how well did streaming turn out to be, you know, compared to content creation or I guess video uh, making, I guess is a proper term for it. With, with streaming, you have to have, you know, you're hoping for an audience. And if, you know, you're below expectations of what you're going to get, you're now you're just, you know, streaming yourself playing a game as if you know no one was watching but if you had an audience you know you can you can play it up so after a while uh i kind of just you know stopped streaming because it's not really my bread and butter i don't really have a, a large you know viewership i'd probably be like five six viewers i mean this was before i you know rose in tiktok or instagram so maybe if i do it again i'll have more than five but uh it's just that was content creation was a lot easier. I can, you know, put time into it. Uh, I mean, not that you can with streaming, but uh, you know, you can kind of what's the word? You can create <sighs> having a brain fart. <laughs> it happens. Uh, creating the video it allows you to like add things into it, like subtitles graphics sound effects post effects all really easily yeah and doing that seemed a lot more fun than uh streaming is adding the uh the finer details mm, fair no that's a valid it's very valid <laughs> i'll say that's why like uh i people a couple of friends of mine and a few staff of a convention vr convention i work for they can tell you they'll always see me in the media staff editors then just editing away and they're like they're like no vid bro go like go have fun go take a break i'm like no man i'm just editing bro don't mind me <laughs> like, you know um you know especially with you know how many amazing people i get to meet you know i want to make sure they're best represented um you know in that regard um because yeah. if anything there's a lot of dark when it comes to this platform, but there's not a lot of light being shown. You know, that's one of the reasons why I made the podcast is so that, you know, for a general listening audience or, you know, whether it's YouTube or Spotify or any other platform I may decide to swap over to, you know, they'll see how, how many different unique creators there are in, on this platform and, you know, hopefully weigh out the good and the bad. You know, that's kind of where the mindset came. Yeah. 
Um, that and I just love talking to people because um, <laughs> you know you never you never really know anything about a person unless you talk to them. That's true. So, um, you know, so I guess in that regard, have you know have you ever had um, any type of uh, experiences when it comes to like taking, let's say, a Twitch VOD and then like mm-hmm. m- making those into clips and making them into TikToks or whatever it may be. Um, and it may not have just seemed the same in the regard of like the fine tuning and stuff. I, gu- I guess like what would be, in your opinion, what would be like the difficult parts from doing that rather than just making everything from scratch? Uh, the difficult part of grabbing VODs is, you know, that it's like a three hour segment and you're just scrubbing through. I used to like find peaks of when I was like screaming or laughing and be like, okay, I'm not going to go through like four hours of, uh, talking. I'll just find out where I laughed and that's probably something funny and I'd go there. And most of the time, not really worthy, but you know, I really don't want to sit through like four hours. I know there's some people that, you know, will just press play and mark things as they go but uh i don't really have the uh the patience to uh sit through that so i'm just i'm always like when i record a video and upload it there's like a good chance that i just filmed that like maybe 15 minutes ago and i uploaded it to my desk or to my laptop and i just started going hard editing as much as i can getting the subtitles in, putting the graphics in, and then immediately uploading. It's, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm impatient of when, uh, with, when it comes to content creation. I'd probably get more of a viewership if I, like, analyzed and optimized of when to upload, but I'm like, I want to make someone's day a little better. I want to upload this now so people can see this. And, uh, that's what I do. There's been times I've uploaded at, like, 2 a.m. And, uh, it did gain a lot of views. But it's, I'm just impatient when it comes to, you know, going through Twitch VODs. So, so that's why I can just create it 20 minutes prior, edit it, and then immediately upload. Fair enough. Yeah, I would say, as somebody who's worked with both long form and short content, it's, uh, it's two different wheelhouses, you know, because like you said best, yeah. you know, sitting through like a three, two, three hour VOD, you know, and getting that shipped out, let's say on like a YouTube channel or whatever, versus just, you know, sitting in a world and just make a funny haha thing for 20, 30 minutes, depending, and just editing and shipping out. Yeah, it's two, two different ball games to say the least. Um, so I guess kind of to, kind of to go in that regard. Um, sorry, I had to adjust my seat there. Um, <laughs> So kind of to go in that regard, um, I, I don't, this is something I was always curious because I always like to learn how other creators do this type of stuff. So what exactly do you, do you use for like video edits and stuff? Uh, I use pretty much just Final Cut Pro, which is a Mac only application. I've used to dabble in uh, Sony Vegas, After Effects, Premiere Pro, uh, but then I got a Mac and I'm like... I don't want to use a third-party tool. I want to use Apple's own software, even though it's a little bit inferior. But, I mean, Apple both works on their software and hardware, so combined, you really can't go wrong uh, unless you need, like, very specific tools. Uh, And being able to, you know, render things out and things just running very smoothly when editing... Uh, if Final Cut Pro was the was the answer for me, that's fair. That's fair. So, kind of to dabble into the background side a little bit, um, I would say because I, if I remember correctly, um, I, was it Sony? I think it was Sony Vegas. I think, or if it was maybe Final Cut. Um, so one of the questions I wanted to ask was, you know, was there, was there times that like, this is a weird way to phrase this, but I'm going to try anyway. Was there ever like weird, like glitches that, you know, made you lose, like, let's say a bunch of progress, like make, cause we all know how video editors are, you know, it doesn't matter which, which program yeah. it is. I would say, you know, kind of going from video program to video program, um, like what were some good things and maybe some bad things about certain programs? 
Well, the uh, the only bad thing about Final Cut that I can see is that uh, I mean, I don't use Final Cut to its maximum uh, capacity, but from what I can gather from other video editors, it's got, it's missing a lot of specific tools from like After Effects and Premiere. Uh, that's probably the only bad I could find. The good is uh, it constantly saves your work. So if like your computer crashes, you're, you could probably be missing like maybe one or two changes because this, every time you, you know, stop moving the mouse, it like silently saves progress. Just continuously which is you know grateful if you have like a power outage or something that you know there's a like a 99 percent chance you'll get all of your uh your hard work back uh but for the others uh with what is it after effects you can do a lot of fine-tuning motion graphics uh pretty much the industry standard uh bad is that if you don't constantly manually save and it crashes you lose that hard work uh same with premiere but premiere is more about basic well not say basic but video editing without all the uh the fancy stuff i think that's about it because i think pretty much sony vegas and the others it's the same thing uh if you don't manually save constantly uh you could lose progress so that i guess that's the uh the the coin flip you could either have a uh, quote unquote inferior product uh final cut pro but you know you're not gonna have to worry about when did i last save or you could be using the industry standard and uh you know if you're not on your a game of constantly saving you can lose hours and hours of work no that's fair i i didn't even know that final cut did the whole saving uh that often that's very interesting <laughs> yeah it's it's happened to me a couple of times where i would just i would shove so many clips into a uh, uh final cut pro and like doing something else at the same time on the computer and causing my computer to just you know absolutely chug because i'm pushing it with how much i'm doing trying to do at once and uh final cut would freeze up but i'm like oh great okay i'm probably gonna lose progress and i had to force quit open it back up no, I was pretty much back where I was, and I was like, I, it saved me time. <laughs> I am blessed. <laughs> um, no, I say that definitely, God, definitely sounds like something that I wish a lot of video players would, or not video players, video editors would have, would be something of that similar, especially with how often it happens, you know? Um, yeah. Hello, everyone. Real quick, just want to stop the episode right here. I want to thank all of you so much for helping with the podcast and supporting the podcast. We've hit officially six months. I'm super happy that this has been such a journey for me and, you know, for a lot of other creators. Um, I do want to thank you guys so much for watching. I also do want to thank some specific people uh, over on the throne and the Ko-Fi supporter side. Uh, thank you, Jake and Astra for the throne side and for the Ko-Fi side. Thank you, Maple Moose. Uh, if you are interested in supporting me, feel free to check out either of those platforms. Uh, I know on the Ko-Fi side specifically for you know your enjoyment uh, I do have blooper reels and you know behind the scenes content as well uh, from not only the podcast but from other projects I'm working on so feel free to check that out uh, much love and thank you guys so much for watching let's get back into the episode woo <laughs> I was gonna say um, kind of to go a little bit away into some more um, funnier topics to say the least um, so I know you posted this a lot, but, um, I know you're a very avid lover of dad jokes. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they are my favorite. <laughs> so they are, uh, yeah. go ahead. You go ahead. No, you go ahead. Fair. Um, I was say with that. So what, one of the, one of the questions I wanted to ask was, uh, uh, what's like your favorite of all time dad joke uh it's probably the one i'm like most known for well not well, most known for in my friend groups uh whenever i say it out loud you know they either stare at me or tell me to shut up it's usually anything ending with er so like saver i'd be like saver i hardly know her and then <laughs> it like it it stuck so much that like anytime it's like loser i'm like loser 
I hardly know her. And they're like, I'm like, I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's a disease now. It started off as a joke, but every time anyone says anything, I'm like, I hop right on it. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I could not resist. Uh, fair. It's, no, it's fair. It's golden. It's, yeah, I, there's so many out there. Or like, uh, I know one of the other big ones is like, uh, like, oh, I'm tired. Oh, hi, tired. I'm dad. Like, it's, it's, so, like, it's, it's, it's one of those jokes. Like, you just play on yes. it. Um, <laughs> um, it was always my favorite. Oh, man. I was going to say, there, God, there are so many different types of dad jokes out there. Um, I, and of course, like, you have, you have, uh, your friend groups that, like, get so annoyed after, <laughs> after so long. Um, I would say one of, uh, one of the other podcasters on the platform, uh, Lion Turtle from Metaverse Degen, he always, always makes puns um and dad jokes and stuff and it's it's became a point now to where like as soon as i realize like i'll say something to him and i'll realize like oh yeah like this 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 and then immediately i catch what i say and i I know he's gonna say something i'm like no <laughs> not like <laughs> same thing with me same thing with me um uh, they're just great. like us for real for real um but, but so out of, out of curiosity like what what got you into loving dad jokes so much is there any like particular I, just, I love dry humor humor that like it's just it's so awful it's good <laughs> it's just like there shouldn't be any laughter to it but yet there is and it just it I just can't stop. It makes me laugh. So then I, I have to do it. It's, I, there's really no starting point. Well, I guess maybe my, my parents, my father always tell dad jokes. I guess, you know, that might've played into it, but something about just complete desert dry humor is what gets me. That's fair. Yeah. I'll say there's a, there's a lot of ways to go about humor and dry humor specifically so kind of kind of another funny topic because i know i know you are constantly getting asked this over over the long while you've been doing this um so l let's talk about the video uh where you keep telling people that you're not simmons um <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna have a montage of every time you look that direction into the camera. <laughs> it's, um, so, you know, I guess to give context, because I not everybody's cultured. Um, what what <laughs> what kind of? Uh, I guess what led into you know, um, people thinking that you were Simmons. I guess, or I guess who is Simmons for the general listening audience? Simmons is a character in the Rooster Teeth series, Red vs. Blue, which happens to be Halo. Uh, what happened was, there was one day, uh, I'll actually tell how it started. Uh, I used to use my normal speaking voice, nothing filtered. Uh, and one day, I was in a, I was streaming, and I was clipping content, and I was inside of one of the uh, pilot worlds. And I didn't want my, you know, video to look like I'm talking normally because the camera is outside of the plane. I'm like, how do I sound like I'm inside, you know, the cockpit? I'm like, oh, there's, you know, here's a plug-in. I put it in and play it. I'm like, sounds pretty good. Uh, uploaded it, and uh, it, I'd said it did pretty good. And people are like, you sound like Simmons. You know, all this, you sound just like Simmons. I'm like, what? No, I don't. I go back and I play it. I'm like, okay, okay. I open up, you know, Red versus Blue. I'm like, all right, I guess it does sound like Simmons. Uh, and then I, I think I uploaded a, a video after that without the voice. You know, didn't get a lot of comments. So I'm like, okay, let's, you know, bring the uh, the filter back in. And, you know, people are like, hey, it's, you know, sound like Simmons. I'm like, I guess that's engagement. And then, like, I kind of do, it kind of, you know, it does kind of fit the character. It kind of, you know, puts you in the atmosphere, the... Uh, Get you kind of engaged with the content. You know, it doesn't feel off. It feels like the filter belongs. Uh, so I started using that. 
And then anytime someone new comes through uh, that has previously watched Red vs. Blue, uh, they'd be like, you sound like Simmons. You got the body of Carolina and the voice of Simmons. I don't know what I'm watching. I'm like, all right. And I just, I kept ignoring it. And, and it just happens all the time. So many new ones like, you sound like Simmons. I'm like, oh, okay. Upload another video. Why does this guy look like, sound like Simmons and look like Carolina? I'm like, <laughs> I see where you're coming from. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, um, that's, yeah, I, I I empathize with that because um, as somebody who has a barbershop hat, the amount of times that I've been asked, oh, is that the One Piece hat? I'm like, brother, like, it's not even the same look. Like, mine's flat. The One Piece hat's curved. Like, I I relate to that. And I do, I empathize with that. Um, so, yeah, I, I, fe- I felt like, I I felt like that was a valid topic to bring up because I get it and I'm sorry because I I know the feeling. Um, like uh, I, I don't mind it. It's it's uh, <laughs> free engagement for my comment section. Uh, and it you know sometimes people argue over that, but uh, I'm sure at some point uh, it will get on my nerve. But I I don't think I'm there yet. I may play on it, but uh, it That's has fair. not got too annoying yet. Well, that's good at least. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It's gotten to the point where like I gotta take my hat off, or I'll just fucking throw it and just <laughs> for the rest, like for the rest, like an hour or so. Like I'll be like, all right, my head feels empty. I'm gonna put it back on. Um, <laughs> it's, just, it's just it's weird. Um, I I empathize with that at least on 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 a small scale. Can't go can't go any public lobbies without getting at least mentioned once. So I guess one of the things, a little bit of the content creation as a whole, um, because there are so many content creators out there with an infinite number of types of content and stuff. So I guess you know for maybe the people out there who are you know, kind of interested in getting started with content creation, if you had to give like one piece of like, or multiple, you know, like one piece of advice um, to kind of give to any maybe newer content creators out there, what would it be? Uh, I'd say upload, where's the camera there? Upload what you like, and if others like it, they will follow. That's what I started with. I'm like, I think this is funny. It's a little desync. It's actually over there. Yeah, right there. You got it. Nope, to to your to your right. Now it's in the place that you're pointing because it's on a rotation. All right. Okay. I I'm gonna try to guess the delay. Upload what you like, and if others like it, they will follow. I think it moved. Yep. Yeah, hey, you got it. I got it. Upload <laughs> what you like, and if others like it, they will follow. That's that's pretty much all. That's what I did. I'm like, I think this is funny. I'll upload it, uh, and you know, it gained following and. You know, if you can find something that you can absolutely, you know, keep repeating and get the same results, do that. But don't fall into the rut of, I need to, you know, milk this until it's completely dry. Because then you're stuck in the mindset of, if I don't do this, I'm not going to get views. Just upload what you like and others will follow. Absolutely. It's pretty much me with my news thing. I'm like, this thing got a lot of views. And, and, you know, I'm just... (laughs) If you go to my channel, that's all I do. But uh, I do constantly enjoy that. So it's not to the point where I'm like, I'm only filming this because this is what I'm known for. It's I'm filming it because I I do enjoy it. And I think, you know, having some kind of silly news appear on someone's feed is uh, something that doesn't happen quite a lot. It's usually either brain rot, uh, like cooking stuff, uh, tutorials. There's no one really, you know, giving out news on uh you know short form content so i gotta fill that void no absolutely i get that and i'll say as time has progressed um i think the only one at least the one that i watch um just because of the sheer nostalgia factor um and it it got pretty popular but it was the uh the spongebob fish um one like it's the 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 bikini bottom fish that would uh give out actually real uh news but through the uh the voice of the bikini bottom fish that's come across many times on my feed <laughs> I've, sometimes I've i stopped and watch it sometimes i'm like 
I, like, I don't want to get my news from a fish. <laughs> I mean, it's it's very relatable. Um, like the fact that I get more news from a fish on TikTok, or at least like more coverage with from a fish than actual news. Hate it here, bro. I I I can't I I can't understand or grasp the concept of like how that's physically possible. You know, like. I, I hate yeah. to talk about politics as much as the next person, but the fact that like the fact that I could get like world news and actual breaking news from a fish from a nineties, two thousands cartoon T V show, you know, yeah. then it's, actual it's, uh, news it's gonna be awful. How did you how did you find out the the Queen of England passed away? Oh, you know, this talking fish on TikTok uh, <laughs> said she passed away. That's how I found out. Yeah, that's, that's how it's gonna be for the rest of their life. I'm pretty sure that's actually how I found out. And I don't know. <laughs> it, was, it was some. Oh no! I, I was, it was either that or something related to like United Kingdom or something like that. Uh, yeah, it was funny as hell. But no, the the news thing. I I think when it comes to you know, content creation and like VR chat content creation. I, I definitely do believe that that newsroom has become like a staple when it comes to that type of stuff. So um, very much kudos to you and like keeping, keeping up the, keeping it up after doing it for so long. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy it. So it's, you know, if, if I was like, I feel like I'm forced to do this, I probably wouldn't. Uh, but you know, I have toned down pumping out videos because right now TikTok uh, changed their algorithm and it's thrown my channel through a loop. But it, every, Instagram and YouTube, it's doing fine. But uh, I'm slowly letting my creative juices come out because I just I hammered away. I'm like, I want to do this and this and this, and I'm uploading at the same time. So now I'm uh, trying to tone it back a bit and. Uh, kind of step into other short form content i mean not just the newsroom but like some other kind of skit but uh i gotta i gotta write it down first and see how it feels that's fair um actually i'll say because we are surprisingly we actually are running out of time a little bit um it did not this did not feel like an hour i'll keep it a buck 50 with you um <laughs> that uh so i guess kind of to uh to end it off on one last question uh before we both ended out mm -hmm. um you know because as everyone is more than well aware you know not to get into politics and stuff but like when it comes to tiktok right you mm -hmm. know with the potential chance of it not being available um in the u.s because the u.s does have a, a major not clientele consumer number yeah do you because i know you do you, you do upload on other platforms too um but i know like yeah, for right, example uh, tiktok is where i pretty much started but uh it's not my main focus anymore but i'd I like it to be because tiktok's pretty much top a game of uh get your stuff out there if you can figure out how to get that out uh on the top which you know i think it was like 2022 to 2023 like i was in like the 100,000 view range from 100,000 to like 500,000 i somehow you know carved out my place in the algorithm and then i you know did not upload for like 3 4 possibly 6 months and i guess i got pushed out or something and i now i'm trying to carve my way back in and figure out what works again. But for uh, Reels and YouTube, you know, nothing's changed there. But uh, you were talking about the bands. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, so I was going to you say... finish that, because I kind of sidetracked it. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. No, I mean, you kind of already low-key answered it. Um, you know, I, I was going to say in that regard, you know, what what would be because you kind of mentioned the algorithms on youtube and reels um you know would there do you think in the future and this is a hypothetical at this point because you already answered the main part of the question um do you think that there will be ever um like another platform or maybe you know 
the platform of TikTok does, let's say, resell to whatever, you know, do you have any thoughts on like, do you think it'll happen? Or do you think ultimately at the end of the day, it's going to be shut down and everything's just going to go over to like YouTube and Instagram reels or whatever? Uh, if the ban does go through, uh, I feel like there will be probably in like some other like years after, because I mean, social media doesn't really, uh, let's take a look uh, at, at threads, threads, you know, dropped day one. It was kind of, you know, up to date, modern, uh, does not get talked about a lot. I mean, it's got thousands and thousands of active users. Uh, but no, I have yet to hear anyone say, hey, have you seen that thing on threads? So it's, uh, if TikTok does get banned, I'd say probably a few years from now, there will be a, uh, something to fill that void. Uh, or possibly, I mean, cause I feel like Reels is uh, kind of in that area to, be, to get more mainstream, but we'll see how that plays out. Uh, YouTube Shorts, uh, I, I think... If YouTube keeps pushing it and, you know, doing things correctly, I could see uh, shorts getting to, you know, TikTok's height. If they make, like, a dedicated shorts app, I think that would, you know, probably bolster it because anyone who's on YouTube doesn't usually like to watch short-form content. Uh, they're there for, you know, usually putting on a 10-minute video and eating food. Uh, you can't really do that in 30 seconds with short-form unless you're a really fast eater. Uh, <laughs> so I'd say uh, the best bet would if TikTok gets banned uh, and YouTube does take it seriously, I think YouTube has the, the better chance of replacing TikTok until a, another TikTok competitor comes through. Exactly. That's, that's kind of where my thoughts lie on it, but I, I always like to see what other creators think on it. Um, cause I mean, realistically, everyone's like, Oh, you know, TikTok, TikTok, this TikTok, that, well, you gotta remember before TikTok, you know, and musically there was vine and before vine, you know, there was, you know, insert the, th the, you know, chain of command when it yeah. comes to shorts content, you know, there's always something granted there's time frames like between them, but there's always going to be something somebody's going to make something. Yeah, it's, it's not going to happen instantly. Like, with, with when Vine shut down, uh, you know, TikTok didn't pop up immediately. It was musically, and I think TikTok got mainstream. So I think Vine shut down in 2012, I believe. Yes. And then, like, TikTok got mainstream, I think, like, 20, like, 18 or 19. So, you know, there's quite a gap there of a... Uh, you know, not short form content, not really being uh, alive. Right. No, absolutely. Um, and one of the one of the biggest memes, and I, if this happens, if this somehow happens, I want it to be documented right here and now. If this happens, I'm going to laugh my ass off. There was a TikTok um, that was talking about this topic, and. Um, Oh, God, I can't remember the creator's name for the life of me, but it was like all the other social media is like harping on TikTok and um, it was like Facebook and Twitter and they were just clowning on TikTok. And, um, you know, TikTok's like, man, I think I think I'm really going to get banned. And uh, and then he calls, um, you know, they're going back and forth and uh, TikTok was like, well, you know, we could just resell. And then uh, he shouts out, hey, MySpace. And then you see a little, you see a guy come out and it's just uh, <laughs> MySpace. He's like, what's Tom been up to? And then and MySpace is like, let's sign a deal. And I'm like, if MySpace comes back and buys TikTok, that, that, <laughs> that would be wild. That would be, that would be full circle. Yeah, I'll Indeed. say... Either my what was back then, MySpace, Bebo, um, like any of those social medias would be wild. It would really go full, like you, you said best. It would go full circle. Kind of came into the thought, you know, talking that that it's just like that brain rot. You just get stuff stuck in your head, and anything that's relevant to the topic, it's like, 
oh yeah there was a tiktok about that or there's a youtube oh, yeah, shorts yeah. are real <laughs> you know it's it's yeah but dude wushi man i appreciate you coming on the podcast this is an absolute blast um before we happy to be here yeah i'll say before we you know exit out you know tell the listening audience you know where people can find you you know any potential upcoming things that are happening you know the floor is yours and the camera moved but yeah take it away am i pointing at the camera yes sir all right. All you have to do is just Google Wushi, W-U-U-S-H-I-E. You'll find me pretty much anywhere. I found that out. Google has me. <laughs> that's how you, well, that's then, how you I know. Mean, you if, if you want to get into specifics, you know, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, pretty much any social media you have. You just type in Wushi. I am most likely there. Fair enough. Hell yeah. Well, did it's been a blast talking to you getting to hang out and uh just talk random not random but some random nonsense here and there but but dude thank thank you again for coming on the podcast it was, it was a blast um i had uh, fun hell yeah i'm glad to hear it um well with that ladies and gentlemen everyone inside and outside the ballpark this is it for episode 26 of the Nova Notes podcast. Um, you know, if you enjoyed, you know, some of the topics we talked about, feel free to smack the like button, maybe leave a comment down below. Tell us why you hate Ohio so much. You know, there's there's a I lot appreciate of appreciate re- that. Yeah, there's there's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of reasons to hate Ohio. But yeah, leave a comment down below. And of course, if you're coming to watch some of the other episodes, why not hit that subscribe button? You're already coming back anyway. But with that, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you. In the next episode, take care and peace. Goodbye, everyone.